Oh, and I hit off a plane too. I took the photo of my kids and my wife as we do with every other trip that we've done. Yep. And uh, 10, 15 meters away from me, one of the jet star stars screams out, idiot, goes, idiot, screams it across the tarmac. Ooh. It's been a while, guys. It's been a while. It's been almost a month since you updated everyone on what's been happening in our life. And it has been a lot. Where we left off, I think Liam was in the midst of orthodontic work. Yes. Um, in Malaysia, we finally found an orthodontist that would actually listen to us instead of just shoving Invisalign on us to fix it. So he has now had his teeth, front teeth reshaped. We're working on some exercises that he does during the day. And when we get back to Malaysia in two months time, he is being fitted for their version of a myo brace to help realign the jaw, shape it out a bit more to get all these teeth to come through. Mind you, he just lost another tooth. So luckily we didn't go with Invisalign because we would have stuffed up pretty much all of that once we lost a tooth. So the, the interesting thing is about dental work, and we found this in Malaysia, is that people have this perception about Southeast Asia that they think it's a backward country. It's yeah. like developing, you know, they think of full metal jacket or something like that, Vietnam. When actually it's so developed, you know, like we, the dentist we went to was more modern than most Australian dentists we've ever been to. They had an x-ray machines, they had 3D scanners, they had full surgeries in there. Yeah. And it was absolutely an amazing experience. And regardless of how much it cost, it's just the care and attention was so much better than what we've ever received in Australia from a dentist. Three weeks later. Fast forward about three weeks. You may, the observer view may have noticed, if I go this way, that there is ocean either side of it, yeah. right? Yeah. And that is because we are on a cruise right now. And uh, for those who had been keeping up today, you knew that we were gonna be on this cruise, but we are eight days into this cruise now and getting onto this cruise was an adventure in itself. And we're gonna talk about that. So we left Malaysia. We left Malaysia on the 2nd of April at 9.45 p.m. at night. So we knew our travel day was gonna be a long, long, long one because we wouldn't then arrive into Sydney until the next morning. We then had flight changes. They were dropping our midday flight and moving it to 3 p.m. So instead of a three hour layover, layover we then had a six hour layover and for a, like an hour's flight for the next trip. Oh, and so, I picked off a plane too. So that was the, that was the interesting yeah, bit about it. So, well. so the first flight was uneventful. We got on the plane in Kuala Bok. We, we just didn't sleep, which is fine. Then we booked in, uh, we, we found like a, uh, like an airport international lounge, which we hung out in for a couple of hours. Yeah. Then we got to Jetstar, got to Jetstar and, uh, was the running problem. across the tarmac. Problems. Problems. Yep. And, uh, walking across the tarmac and like every other tarmac boarding that we've done, we I've taken a photo of the boys with the tails of the plane. So Philippine airlines, Vietnam, uh, Vietjet, AirAsia. I've yeah. got tail photos of the boys on, uh, in Pauline at the tail of the plane, just because I think it's, you know, it's one interesting photo. The big turbines. Yeah. Like, we've got pictures all around these planes from walking on tarmac in Asia. We go to Australia, we take one photo and he gets kicked off the flight. Like, with so, just ridiculous. So basically I took this photo and then, I don't know, 10, 15 meters away from me, one of the jet star stars screams out, idiot. Goes, idiot, screams it across the tarmac. So I was like, whoa. So I turned around, I walked over to her and I said, did you really just call me an idiot? <laughs> Like, I was just dumbfounded because like, I didn't expect a airline staff to be calling me that. And then she just went off her, she just went off her rocker at me. You should know better. You know, you can't take photos on this. This is a federal offense. The police are gonna be waiting. I was like, whoa, I'm just taking a photo of my cubes. It's nothing, you know, my phone was on flight mode. Anyway, at that point I was like, what are you talking about? What is your name? Cause I was just gonna report it. And so we're having a to and fro conversation about it. And she's like, no, that's it. You're not on the plane anymore. Get off the tarmac. The police will be waiting for you upstairs. So anyway, she reckons I was abusing her. So we got up to the, I got up there. Now the thing was, they didn't even let me know that I couldn't board. So Pauline had gotten on the plane and I was like, can you at least let my wife and kids know that I'm not going to make this flight if I'm not on it? No, no, you don't deserve that. This is her exact words. You don't deserve that. Just get off the tarmac. I was like, wait a minute. She's got my passport and wallet. What am I supposed to do? So anyway, get into the gate and boarding area, waited 45 minutes, you know, stressing out because Pauline's on the plane stressing out that yeah. she can't get in contact with me. I was stressing out because I can't let them know what's happening. Long story short, about two minutes before the plane was about to leave, they let me back on the plane. Now, if I had actually abused her in any way, do you think they would ever let me back near anywhere near that plane? No, no she instigated, then she antagonized me. 
So anyway, I, put, I made a TikTok about it. It went viral. Like 15 news stations wrote about it. We're on the Today Show about it. It was just a big blow up. Uh, and then it's nice because on this cruise, it's sort of the, the the whole thing sort of blown over. We still haven't got an apology yet, so we're still waiting on that, but that's okay. So long story short, we made it onto the cruise. <laughs> Boarding was reasonably uneventful. It was actually really good with the thousands of people that were standing in line with. So you, you can imagine we've got into the cruise terminal. There are just cars unloading people just constantly, right? There's a line halfway down, like the drop-off area, like the Umba drop-off area, the line is halfway down. And we're getting loaded, we're like, oh my gosh, we're going to be here for hours getting onto this cruise. And all of a sudden, this line went from here to pretty much we were at the door within like 10 minutes. Then inside was another 10 minutes. Like it just, it took us. Oh, we now? It was just under an hour. I think I watched, I watched the time because I looked at my phone just when we turned up. It was 50 minutes. 50 minutes from the time we stood in line to the time that we were literally on the ship getting to our state work. So definitely applauding the cruise terminal down there because the staff just made it so easy to get on board. Obviously, we printed out all the right documents and we'd done all the right things. Stuff we didn't get. We didn't get you know left behind left behind with you know other people that hadn't done visas stuff like that so we'll we'll pretty much all but yeah then we had a few issues on the ship so we had actually booked a quad room and from the quad room that we booked we believed that we had a bundle room so we, it was supposed to be a bed and then um, a couch with a pull down bunk over the top of it so we'd have all four of us in the room we'd still have some floor space that kind of stuff turned up in the room no all we had was a couch, a pull-out bed, and our bed. And when you pull out the bed on the floor, you literally lose all of the floor space. There, and, there was nothing left. Like, and and we're, not, we're not picky in any weird way. Like, we weren't concerned about the fact that it was a pull-out. Uh, we were concerned that I needed to work. And as soon as you pulled the bed out, there was no space. You couldn't get to the desk. So you didn't. Use the desk and all. It rendered the desk in and inoperable because of where the bed ends up. Down there. there was no option to move that desk either. So... We went down to guest services and we were so polite. We just said, look, this is a situation. We thought we had booked a bunk room. Like that is your advertising that was on the website. It is not a bunk room. It was our situation. We can't use the desk when we call it, like when we call the bed out. So what what are the options? We're not looking for an upgrade. We're just looking for maybe a better orientation of room or when- Yeah, we just need a solution, there, there, right? There's, solu there's gotta be a solution. So we went back and saw it with them for quite a while. Like it took, it took a good few hours. Like yeah. it was, was getting really, really stressful. You know, you first get all the ship, you think, oh my gosh, we're gonna have so much fun. And it was really stressful. But the manager was very, very nice. He actually then changed our room so that we were on a different deck and we actually had rooms. We now had two separate rooms. One was across the hallway from the other. So we've got two rooms. One's got a king bed and one had a queen bed that you can separate into two singles so we put kids in one room and asked some minutes and and from there we've actually had an amazing time because we definitely should have booked two rooms yeah mind, mind you we're never going to book one room with four of us ever again after you get two separate rooms because can you imagine 16 nights with the same four people in one room with one bathroom and one toilet i think it would have got the old fight print lead yeah. so a little fight glad that they were you know they had the extra rooms that we couldn't spread out of each other. So yeah, that was the first day. So it was a bit stressful. We got until about the fourth or fifth day and the weather. He decided to turn real quick. Decided to turn very quickly. We ended up with over three metre swells and 60 knot winds. And we've had some mechanical issues on the ship and all sorts of things. So today was supposed to be a port day. We were supposed to be there from like 7 or 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, I can see the island at the moment. I don't know whether this is the island we're getting off at. But we're supposed to be here around two o'clock, so it ended up being like six hours late to port because of all sorts of issues that have happened. Wow, we haven't had any illnesses like with that's wood. Riley and I've kind of felt a little bit queasy, but in Asia, I'd found these like little lotion sickness, um, like sticky dots you put behind your ears, and I don't know what's in them, whether it's, whether it's a placebo effect or not, but it has worked for both of us. I put some on Riley last night and they slept with them, but I had done it the night before because it was really rough. Like we're at the back of the ship. As every time we went over a wave and back down and back up. We're rolling this way a lot. 
yeah, so we're going this way and then we'll go this way as well. So we had this like weird, like roller coaster type art of motion in the ocean island going on. So it's been a little bit intense. But overall, <laughs> considering we've been at sea for eight days now, it's been pretty good. I, I think uh, I've enjoyed it. I've loved it. And I know the kids have enjoyed it. They're, well, they're at Kids Club at the moment. I don't even care about it. So, so like, it's been a good experience so far. We're on the Quantum of the Seas, which is a Royal Caribbean ship. And it's a big one. So it's like uh, the sixth largest ship in the fleet. And uh, you can really tell that extra space makes a massive difference when you have like eight sea days in a row because everyone's just spread out. You know, there's people everywhere, but it doesn't feel that busy. So it's been a really good experience so far. One of the highlights, absolute highlights to me, is the fact that the ship has Starlink. So like I've been out at work and do um, YouTube and uh, run the agency from the ship, which has been amazing, um, which is what stopped us through cruising yeah. past like this, because I can't go 16 days of that in without needing to then. So it's been really good. And then right now, like Koi says, uh, we're sailing into Tahiti and we can literally see in the eye. That's the first land we've the seen in several days. And we have seen in eight days. So we'll, we have just seen ocean upon ocean for the past eight days. And it's actually really nice to see it. <laughs> so we'll do a full tour of the ship. We've been making videos about the ship um, and we'll do a full tour of the ship on our other channel, which is Families on the Rise. And if you go over to that and subscribe, Families on the Rise, and uh, we'll do a full tour of the ship. But right now, we really just wanted to give you an update of what's happening because it's been pretty eventful, but uh, yeah. the last eight days have just been the same thing. Eat, swim, yep. rest. Yeah, watch the watch the um the swimming pool turn into a wave pool overnight yep. because the ocean it, and because it's a body of water, it washes backwards and forth with the motion of the ship. And watching that is actually quite funny. <laughs> so yeah, we've been doing the same thing every day. So there's not really much to report except that the quantum of the seas is really good. Really enjoyed it. We've eaten way too much food. Eating way too much food. Yeah. I've been trying to supplement that. I've been going to the gym every second day, yeah. but the day not that's helping. <laughs> But yeah, we'll give you an update. We'll, we'll be more regular with the updates now because we are doing some pretty exciting stuff. So from here, obviously, um, we're going to Hawaii. We'll do another update on the ship before we uh, get there. We're going to be in Hawaii for a week, and then we're off to Japan for a month, and then we're off to South Korea for two weeks, then to the Philippines for a month, and then to back to Malaysia. So it should be a pretty interesting next couple of months. Well, well and we'll keep you all up to date with what's happening there. But uh, I suppose right now we should go and check out this island, see what we can yeah, see. Yeah, definitely check out the island and pick up some kids from Kids Club so they can come and see it as well. And I know they want to hop in the pool, so... Let's do that thing. All right, so I'm Jimmy. And I'm Polly. And we'll catch us all on the horizon.